Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. We got David in here with us today. He's all the way down here from Alberta, Canada. And uh, David comes in here today complaining mostly of his lower cervical, upper thoracic junction being tight and sore and protruding more up here too, right, David? Yeah. And he gets tight in his lower cervical, upper thoracic spine. He doesn't have any radiating symptoms out to his arms or his hands, so he doesn't have radiculopathy. Uh, he does have some mid thoracic and upper thoracic tightness and soreness. Low back pain right down to lumbosacral junction at L5S1. He's had uh, some left wrist hand pain that he feels in the palm of his hand here. And he was asking if he had carpal tunnel and I can do a test on that real quick. Let's show him. Have your thumb and little finger together. This is called an opponent's muscle, it is C6. See, he, he wouldn't be, if I had carpal tunnel, I'd be able to do that. But he, he is strong, so he does not have carpal tunnel. Same thing here, C6. And his opponent is strong there, too. That's an indication that you don't have carpal tunnel, but he's probably still pinching the nerve out either out of his lower cervical, left shoulder, elbow, or wrist that's causing that pain in your left hand. Uh, he gets some cramps and spasms in that left wrist and hand as well. Uh, he hasn't had any bladder bowel dysfunction and is able to walk on his toes and his heels fine so he doesn't have foot drop or uh, bladder bowel dysfunction which is uh, we always ruled that out right away because that's pathology um, David have I missed anything nope. I get it okay so tell people or other crack addicts around the world why you came down here all the way from Alberta to get this my uncle I played hockey today. with and, and oh that's right I forgot to mention you're a hockey player huh yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, your uncle told you about us? Yeah. That makes him a crack addict, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Canada crack addict. Okay, so let's show him your posture first, David. I'm gonna have you close your eyes and flex your head forward and backwards again, please. Don't just flex it forward like this. And then backwards, and then back to neutral. Okay, so you can see his head's a little forward in the Z axis. There's his ear right here over his clavicle. It should be back here over his shoulders. That's why his hands are right out front of him like this. Uh, his head's also translated a little bit to the right. That's why his right shoulder dips down. You see that look longer on your right hand there, David? Yep. So your right hand looks longer than your left one? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's just from your head being forward and right. Mm -hmm. So this is his very first adjustment here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief. So we're going to adjust him on the biophysics table first. Let's lay back on your stomach here now for me. And again, we already did the orthopedic neurological examination on him, so I'm not going to repeat all that. His left leg is short by about a quarter to a half an inch. I bring him up, it gets a quarter inch longer. That tightens up in his lumbar spine, right, right down here in the lumbosacral region, right, David? Mm -hmm. So he does have a left sacroiliac subluxation right there, which his left sacral deviation test was positive on the left as well. These might be a little sore at first, David, just because they've been out for a while. But they'll feel better once I get them put back in place. Yep. That's probably going to be the sorest one right there. Yes, sir. There we go. Yes, sir. Crackhead's going to love you, David. There we go. Look right her goes up and out, buddy. Okay. Now your legs are even. This should already feel a little easier in your low back, but you tell me. Your foot stayed more level that time. On the right side, tighten up. Right there. David's been adjusted a couple times up there in Canada, he told me. Last one a couple months ago. There we go. Yep. Okay, you're gonna feel your head popping up on this next one, David. There. Perfect. Okay, let's turn you on your back, please, sir. This I'm bringing his head up and over his thoracic spine so we can get his ear back here over his shoulder where it's supposed to be. Slide down this way about an inch for me, David. Put both arms out, palms facing up. There you go. 
What position do you play in hockey? Right wing. Right wing. Fun spot. Right. You get a lot of shots in there, huh? Or are you passing mostly? Uh, both. Both. Yeah. yeah. However, further down. There you uh, go. You should have felt that from your knee all the way up to your lower back, David. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let this one go too. There we go. Good. Okay. Let's sit you up, face out that way for me. There we go. So his main complaint was the upper thoracic T1 area that was causing his posture to deviate forward up there. And he's taking care of this the way people should take care of their spines, which is preemptively, rather than waiting on it to deteriorate and degenerate further. A smart play on your part. Anytime you can get adjusted preventatively, it's better than trying to chase the symptoms down all the time. Once you get ridiculous off your sciatica, is it pretty far? Disc forward injury. Forward? A little bit forward. Yeah. I think that's probably just from your texting all the time, working on the computer all the time. Let's come over on this table next. So I'm going to have you lay on your back on this table, David, with your butt right here and spread it out. No, head up this way for me, please, sir. Get on this one a little. There you go. Perfect. Okay, you're going to let your legs just relax. The table's going to lift them up. And he's a little bit longer legged than the average patient, so I put him on number two here, which raises the legs up a little higher. Okay, see so that's a little too high, so I'm gonna bring him down into the median right there. That should feel pretty relaxed in that position, does it? Do you sleep in with the big pillow too, or you got no pillow? Pillow. Okay, see what a pillow does? Reverses that curve, makes that worse. If you sleep on your back with no pillow, your head goes all the way back. Now you've got a forward lordosis in here, which is what your spine's supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And this should relax the musculature, so that should feel pretty comfortable. Oh. Does it? So so I should sleep without a pillow? Yes, sir. Yeah, but I got your legs elevated legs parallel up. to the floor. Because uh -huh. if you lay flat, it'll tighten up the paraspinal, so it'll go all the way up. Just like if you have a pillow in here, that reverses here, but it changes the biomechanics all the way down, too. Uh -huh. So it's a lot of little things that we're doing all the time. So if you think about it, we sleep a third of our life. So if I sleep flat if you without sleep, a pillow, will it fix it? Or It'll be better. you got to have your legs elevated, though. So what, I need to find something. Get a I'm box not. or a plastic storage bin or a clothes basket, flip it upside down, put it under there, duct tape a pillow to it. Gotcha. I mean, I don't recommend people go out and buy these expensive wedges on Amazon because that's they're flimsy anyway. They don't hold you up anyway. Just get a plastic box or even a cardboard box that's sturdy. Put a pillow on it and bring your legs up. It's a hard habit to change, but it sure does give you a lot of spinal biomechanical corrections. Okay, so on this one, David, you want to keep your teeth together. Do not bite your tongue. Reach through your nose. Mm-hmm. Oh, there it is, ow, right ow. there. Now, you should have felt that go all the way down, did yeah. you? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Okay. First one's a little bit of a shocker. A headache. Oh. Yeah, that'll go away. Probably go away right here with I do this. Let this go. There you go. Let me have you. That's it right there. Do you feel that? I adjusted your Atlas C2 and Oxpit on that one. Mm -hmm. Headache should be better right now, actually. Do you still feel that headache, same? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay. You're probably going to be sore for about 72 hours. Let me help you up here. Sideways, bring your legs over. You always want to turn it sideways like that because when you sit straight up, it puts your spine in flexion, makes the vertebra slip backwards. That's where the nerves are. You don't want to do that. Just come over here and shoot you now. Okay, paste the mirror for me again, please. So I'm going to have you just relax here now. Breathe. I'm going to bounce these muscle spindles with this instrument. This will help relax your paraspinal muscles. Tighter in there, you feel that? Okay, now you're, here's your homework, David. Yeah. This is what will help you the most at home. Yeah. Shoulders up and back. Flare these guys, palms forward towards the mirror. See that tightens up that whole trap? Yeah. And then your head's forward and right a little bit, so we can come straight back first. Translate left, then look backwards. You're gonna feel a little tap on your atlas. Here, squeeze those, there you go, better. There you go, okay, now relax. Now, when you go forward and backwards again, this should feel smoother to you, but you tell me. Yeah, smoother. 
Take a look at neutral now. So you're not translated right anymore. Mm -hmm. Pelvis is right down the middle right now. Good deal. Well, this is your first adjustment here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief, and you said your one of your friends told you about it. Yep. Been watching our videos, right? Yep. yep. What's her name? Uh, Mark. Mark Sanchez. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Mark, that makes you a crack addict, you know, Canadian crack addict. <laughs> <laughs> So well, we're glad to have you down here. How would you describe your first experience here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief to our rest of our crack addicts around the world? It was really good, thank you. Oh good, you're my pleasure. Uh, this is our Friday, it's Wednesday, so this is our last day in the office this week. And we wanna wish y'all a happy midweek and we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>